Well, hi guys, I'm Kelsey Gamer again. Welcome back to the spare room. Time to take a break from painting. It's, my arm's about to fall off, so I thought I'd do a little bit or, or do a little bit of a video on it, on progress on this boiler. Uh, we've got the rest of our holes in. So these two are the water gauge and the pressure gauge, and on the back here is the feed water right in the centre. And the fire hole door, of course, we got last time. Now, I've drilled these two plates. There's a fair bit of work in this because it's copper and it gets hot and it's dangerous rotten stuff and it's stringing and it's really not much fun, but I've cleaned them all up. And reamed them all so that the, the tube's just a nice fit in there. If they're too tight, you'll never get all these bits in the board of the silver solder. So I've just got these so that they're a nice tap fit in there. They should be good. One of them's offset. One hole is supposed to be offset. Double check that. Yeah, one of them's offset. That's for the steam dome or the pressure gauge. If we have it too close or back on the PCD, what's going to happen is that it's going to foul with the chimney in the middle. So I've moved that one out. The corresponding hole in the bottom is for a bush and that's for the blowdown valve. So there's no tube in that. And we've got six tubes, which are um, one in the centre and the other five. So they need a bit more cleaning up. And I'm going to pickle them and pickle every. So let's talk about pickle. We need a plastic container. There's numerous things you can use to pickle copper to, get, to, to bring it up nice and shiny. The most effective thing is probably citric acid, which you buy at the supermarket. It's good, easy on the hands, and it's not going to make any of your hand, fingers fall off. And it's probably safe to wash down the sink and all that sort of stuff, so that's what we're going to use. This has gone hard, so I'll break him up a bit. The battery went flat. This has been in the pickle about an hour. Um, everything's nice and clean and, and how it should be. I want these holes here to to so that the water gauge is in between the two the two tubes. This needs to be at at 30 degrees to the main axis of the boiler or the main axis of the boiler needs to be halfway between these two holes so I've marked this each side just with a sharpie so I can see it and that's a nice tap fit in there we've got to knock that down so that this pokes up a couple of millimetres so that this one when it comes in in the right position here is in the same position in relation to the tubes so first job rather than try and weld it all up at once which is kind of a bit impossible I'll put them back in there will be to move this into the right position and sit it up on a on a platform inside on the hearth and just tack it 
then we can find a platform to sit all the tubes on and we can put the other end in and get it all nice and true and straight and then we can braise it up. This is probably the hardest part of the whole build is to get, I think, is to get everything in the right spot. These are a nice tap fit which is a, a good start. If you start messing around with everything a little bit loose you're going to have trouble with it. I just use a screwdriver and position the tubes through when we get there but first job is to get the hearth and set this up so that it's just down in the right position which is about there and before we push it home I'm going to get a little acid brush and some flux that's all this older flux and run around the inside there so that everything's nicely fluxed up and then we can run around there and, and probably we're going to solder that up all in one operation around that seam and then we don't have to worry about that while we put the others in so we'll come back when everything's sort of set up in the right spot and we've got the torch out so there we go I've got all that this camera trolley is just the thing for this just adjust the light there. I haven't sat anything under it. I found a, a tin can which is exactly 55 millimeters high. So we've set that in there so that it's nice and flush. And that should be the right position. It should all be nice and square. What I'm going to do is weld this in. And we're going to say this plate will be in there for good then. And then we'll we'll probably have a bit of a go at trying to get all the rest of the bits in here so that they, everything lines up. So time to silver solder this. I'm just using Easy World 602, which is a, a BOC or um, CIG or whatever you want to call it flux, a silver solder flux. So I seem to have a lot of res pretty good results with it. For this one I'm using brown tip which is I think someone will correct me about 20% silver. Um, for the joints and the outside pieces because we want a lower melting point I'm going to use 45% and also on the outside where the where it's got to look nice 45% always comes up silver whereas this comes up quite dull. So let's get the torch. Now, I'm not here to teach you how to silver solder. Um, copper's good though. Because by the time you very nearly get it hot enough to tack in one spot, you're going to find it's hot enough for it to solder nearly. So, have a look at Keith Appleton. Um, on YouTube, he's a really nice guy, Englishman, does a lot of steam engine repairs and boiler builds. He's the man to teach you the silver solder. What we're looking for is a nice wet round joint in there, it's smooth and, and shiny. Um, all the way around with no holes. And 
and that'll run around there really nice. But I'm going to just get this. So anyway, we'll let that cool a bit. I think I've got it right round there. Um, if there's any holes after we've pickled it, we'll just go back over it and we'll touch them up when we do the bottom tubes. But I'm pretty confident that that's not a bad solder joint right round there. It might be still a fraction hollow on here, but I think it's got it right the way through. It's not going through. I did have a good look. When I, when I couldn't seem to fill it up. The thing to do will be to quench it out. And then put him in the pickle for a bit longer and see how it cleans up. We might call that enough for this video. It all looks pretty crappy there if we have a look. It's quenched out. But pick it up, it'll come up as good as new. I'll pack everything up and give it a pickle and we'll have a bit of a look at it. And work out what we're going to do next. I'll go give this a scrub under the tap. So there we go, after a pickle, that's pretty sweet really, it's a nice solder job, I think we've got that looking pretty good. A few people have asked already and I just put, I'm going to need a bit longer in the pickle hunt there, but a few people have asked already why I didn't do it all at once. A couple of reasons for that. One is if you put everything in there, something's going to fall out and get stuck in the wrong spot. So do it in stages, you, you get on a lot better. Uh, another reason is that you can clean the inside of it nicely as well as you go. So everything's more likely to stick. And thirdly, I guess if you do have any issues or problems or if you if you have a good look there and you find that there is a hole, you know, I don't believe that there is, you can go back and sort it out before you melt all the other bits out trying to fix it. So they're the reasons. Anyway, I'm going to call that a night tonight. I've still got some painting to do. Uh, be sure and have a look at the rest of this series it's going to run the little Myford boy engine um, have a look at that video too if you're running out of things to look at and don't forget to have a look at the competition playlist but um, I'm going to leave this in the pickle overnight because it's still got a little bit of scale in there and come back to tomorrow and see what I can do thanks for watching guys and girls be kind to each other